there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. I see myself like a fat, ugly, horrible head, too small eyed, not nice enough teeth sort of person. We live in a society obsessed with looks. In my life, I prioritise beauty, nine, maybe 10 out of 10. Last year, we spent almost 17 billion pounds on looking beautiful, and nearly half the adult population wants cosmetic surgery. I'd like to have my boobs done again. I want to get my nose done, Botox on my forehead and cheek implants. I've been known to spend 3,000 plus a month on beauty treatments. For many of us, the pressure to conform to conventional ideas of beauty is huge. I don't feel good enough, I don't feel pretty enough. And those who don't fit the bill can pay a high price. They are marginalised, bullied and face constant prejudice in their daily lives. People would stare and say things under their breath. Miss Piggy was a favourite name. I don't want to scare anyone. What happens when we ask them what makes us beautiful? It's not what you see on the outside. It's what's on the inside. You don't have to look fantastic to have a fantastic life. People who are obsessed with the way they look are the real beasts. In this series, four facially disfigured people take on a group of beauty addicts and challenge their perspective on life. Do not worry about you know, skin cancer. I live by the attitude, here today, gone tomorrow. Will the beauty obsessives prove that appearances are more important than we'd like to admit? You're not going to change me. I'm not going to sunny side. I don't want it. I want nice to just feel a little bit like she's trying to sort of convert me. Or will the beauty outsiders show them there's more to life than looks? He's got a facial disfigurement which he has to live with every day, so it sort of shocked me. I'm still a bit shocked right now, actually. <laughs> hair extensions, I have false individual eyelashes, I have Botox, I've had two boob jobs already, and then I have facials, waxing, nails done, pedicure, spray tans, sunbeds, colonic irrigation, that's about it. So not that much, but that's it. Meet 26-year-old hairdresser Corinne. Her dedication to beauty hasn't always gone to plan. The first boob job I had went wrong. I got um, capsular contraction in the left boob, so it's where one is really solid and then the other one's just soft and normal. The second boob job I had got infected. I don't have any sensation in my boobs whatsoever. Single girl Corinne spends up to £3,000 a month to achieve the perfect face and body. With beauty, you pay the price, so I'm quite happy to, to lose the sensation to have the boobs that I want. I'm fine with that. Corinne was born to an English mother and Jamaican father, but she hasn't seen her dad since she was three years old. I got this note from my dad, thanks, Dad, and um, yeah, it's just quite sort of like, it's here, it's too big. It doesn't suit my face at all. I don't like my afro hair, I can't deal with it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the texture of it. And Jamaicans are pronounced to cellulite. And I have got cellulite, so I blame that on my dad. It's all his fault. Corinne has plans for a third breast enhancement, and her mum is worried. You think I've lost weight? Yeah, you have lost weight. You're losing too much weight. You're perfect as you are. In fact, you need to put a bit more weight on. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Corinne doesn't think she's got a problem, but with mum increasingly concerned, she's agreed to take part in the programme. She's so young and so beautiful that she doesn't need any of these enhancements. What's she going to be like when she's my age? Will it be a facelift upon a facelift? That's quite sad, really, isn't it? It's really sad. To prove to her mum that there's nothing wrong, Corinne has agreed to spend the next two weeks with someone who believes that looks aren't everything. I have creature Collins syndrome, and it's a genetic disorder. Common symptoms, no ears, and being born without ears because of the Clitch Collins um, also means being born profoundly deaf, no cheekbones. 
also the eyes. One eye might be lower than the other eye. It's the jaw. My jaw is like that when it's open and it's that when it's shut. For 26-year-old Simon, looking different has meant a lifetime of prejudice. I got bullied at school quite a lot because obviously I look different. Uh, when I first meet people out in public, um, it's it's the staring, really. That's, to be honest, that's probably the first thing you have to get past. If you do hear things from them, it's usually not very nice. Despite the abuse, Simon has no plans to change the way he looks. Cosmetic surgery, in my honest opinion, I don't think I need it. Will I get special hearing powers if I have ears implanted? No. If I go through all the effort of having cheekbones implanted, what will I gain afterwards? It's not going to give me say, superpowers, for example. I feel it's a waste of time, and what's the point? I feel happier with the way I look. Simon wants to help Corinne beat her beauty addiction. To do that, he's going to spend the next two weeks with her, challenging her attitudes to beauty. Personally, I probably won't get on with someone that can't walk past her and with them without looking at their reflection. I've never met anyone with a facial disfigurement before. All my friends are glamorous, attractive, beautiful. I'm really nervous. Today, Corinne is going for a consultation to discuss having a third boob job, the most popular cosmetic procedure in Britain. More than 8,000 breast enhancements take place each year. They really keep dropping. How I want them is, like, stuck on. Unknown to Corinne, Simon is on his way to her Harley Street consultation. Now, the other things that you're interested in? Liposuction. Why do you want liposuction? I know it's fabulous and... It's fabulous? Yeah. Who told you that? It's totally fabulous, I've seen it. This is a surprise visit, so Simon can get an honest and frank picture of Corinne's dissatisfaction with her body before he meets her. Well, just, just from looking at her, I can quite obviously see that I... I don't think she needs anything done, to be honest. Uh, she looks quite quite attractive. My underarms I want done. Um, I want um, my stomach, um, my outer thighs, my inner thighs, my calves. What's all this fat she's talking about? I have no idea. I want lipo on my face because I've got the fattest face ever and it really, really bugs me. I really, really want a slim, really slim face. Do not ever allow anybody to lipo suck your face. The danger's there. You have five nerves that come out from below your ear. Any one of those nerves will give you a paralysis. It really does bug me, you know, seeing someone sit there and go on and on about having, first having all this done, but not just that, but all this she wants done. But the big question that's going around in my mind is, can I get along with her? <laughs> or can I last uh, five minutes with her in the same room? Simon decides it's time to meet Corinne. Nice to meet you. Hi. No, can I have a cuddle? <laughs> Are you all right? So I've been a bit nervous. I know, it's a bit of a shock. I feel really shocked. Well, I'm not a monster, so don't worry. Forgive me for being a, just a tad bit surprised and a bit... Sort yeah. Of too stuff, if you like, to see someone as good-looking as you asking about... Um, Plastic surgery. I just want to feel better about myself. I don't. I, I'm not sort of comfortable in the skin that I'm. I'm in. Do you think you look beautiful? I don't think I look beautiful at all now. That's it. I feel really upset. Have a seat, if you want. <laughs> I was crying because it was very overwhelming. It just made me feel a little bit pathetic, in a way, being in there moaning about little bits of fat when he's got a facial disfigurement which he has to live with every day, so it sort of shocked me. I'm still a bit shocked right now, actually. I have uh, Tutor Collins syndrome, so basically this means... What is that again? It's a uh, facial disfigurement. The uh, choice of uh, facial surgery has been offered many, many times. Uh, just chose not to have it. I believe I don't need it. 
Over the next two weeks, the pair will challenge each other's attitudes to beauty. Simon, why do you have a dog? I was born found and deaf, um, so uh, Foggy is my guide dog for deaf people. I had a chihuahua um, and I just got rid of it because it's just too much hard work. Simon wants to make Corinne realise she should accept herself as she is. Hopefully, by the end of this two weeks, she'll agree with me. She doesn't lose any of this. That might change her life. But first is Corinne's chance to put the case that looks are important. I don't know how someone can come into my life and tell me about the way that I am and sort of judge it. If I want to spend my money on getting all my fat sucked out, then that's what I'm going to spend my money on. 26-year-old hairdresser Corinne is a self-confessed beauty addict. She's had two boob jobs and, despite her mother's worries, now wants a third and liposuction to achieve her ideal look. I really, really slim arms, a slimmer face, slimmer stomach, slimmer legs, different hair. Um, but, yeah, I think like a little doll, so sort of, like, perfect. Sign language teacher Simon was born with Treacher Collins syndrome, which has given him a facial disfigurement and profound deafness. He's also 26, but his life experiences have left him with very different opinions to Corinne. What do I gain from getting cosmetic surgery? I don't know, to be honest. It's a waste of time and a waste of money. They're spending two weeks in each other's lives. The first week in East London, where single girl Corinne lives with her flatmate. It's their first morning together, and Corinne wants to show Simon there's nothing wrong with her daily beauty routine. Usually I'll go to the gym, if you're up for that. I want to take you to, for some, like, pamper treatments and stuff. First, Corinne needs to get ready for her workout at the gym. Oh, it's just taken quite a while, actually. <laughs> Corinne has been doing her makeup for 40 minutes. I'll just go and see if she's uh, ready. Oh, hi. Just uh, one of those things, okay? Everything's fine. Okay. I will be ready soon. Are you uh, packing for a holiday or are you just <laughs> getting ready for the gym? I wouldn't say I'm going to go as far as doing like night makeup, but just sort of like minimal. Day, day sort of makeup yeah. for the <laughs> for the gym. Like I can't face the world at all. I just feel like everyone's staring at me. So when I'm done, I feel like I can sort of go out there with confidence. I won't be long. <laughs> all right. I can thankfully see there's nothing wrong with her. The impression I get is people will look at her because she is very attractive. A lot of it's in her head. Finally, they're on their way. It took Corinne over an hour to get ready, and the gym is only five minutes away from her flat. I have to make sure that I go to the gym every single day, otherwise I do get a bit of a chub. It just enables me to be able to eat a little bit more, um, eat out with my friends and stuff like that. As a self-employed mobile hairdresser, Corinne is free to choose how she spends her days, and six days a week, she starts with a two-hour workout. Will you be all right starting on the treadmill for this? Yeah, no problem. Just what one doing, is like, a slow walk or something like that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. It's Simon's first time in a gym. Two hours a day, six days a week. I can think of much better things to do with my time. Next, it's the tanning salon. With the massive rise in sunbed use, the rates of skin cancer have quadrupled in the last 30 years. You only really allowed a certain amount of time on one. So what I do is go in the sunbed, have a sunbed, and then run to the next shop and pretend I haven't been free. So I'm like, oh, hi, all sweaty. I haven't had a sunbed in a while. Can I have a sunbed, please? Thank you. And then go and get another sunbed. So it's like double whammy tan in one day. Simon decides that despite his opposition to artificial beauty, he's going to try a sunbed for the first time. I'm really happy to do this purely to so that I can sort of get the sense of what Corinne goes through. Use of sunbeds in the under 35s increases the risk of cancer by 75%. And do you not worry about things like skin cancer? And... Um, yes, I do, um, but not too much. I just sort of, I live by the attitude, here today, gone tomorrow. 
Next comes one of Corinne's favourite treatments on which she spends £80 each month. I'm going to be having um, something done called colonic irrigation. This is the, kind of the delicate part of the operation. OK, you're all covered up. Colonic irrigation involves inserting a tube into the rectum and injecting water to clean out the bowels. Side effects can include cramps, nausea, vomiting and kidney damage. The health benefits are unproven. I just saw someone have a tube stuck up their bum. <laughs> Is it something I would be willing to have a try at? Probably not in a million years. Tonight, Corinne wants Simon to come out clubbing with her and her flatmate Lisa. I want to make sure that you look sexy. Um, so basically, um, I brought you a shirt for tonight. Lovely. I hope you like it. It's I very do. fashionable, Simon. She's also decided to give him a full makeover, something Simon has never seen the point of before. Perhaps you know, this will be a bit of a culture shock for me, you never know. I think it looks beautiful already. Uh, We're just going to just cut these bits so it's out of your face a bit. I, I won't lie to you, it just feel a little bit like she's trying to sort of convert me. Corinne believes that there's nothing wrong in trying to look your best and hopes Simon likes his new look. Are you guys ready? Woo! You look lovely! It fits perfect! Oh, God, I was just going to say, I can't stop staring at myself. I just feel like I want to ask that guy out on a date. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, that feels great. It's taken Corinne six hours to get ready. But at last they arrive at the nightclub at one in the morning. What do you think of all this, Simon? <laughs> Have you got any good dance moves? Not at all. <laughs> Simon may have got used to the idea of a makeover, but going out to an ultra chic London nightclub is still a shock to his system. It's a whole new world for me. I definitely feel like a fish out of water. For some reason, I don't quite feel comfortable. <laughs> if there is hundreds and hundreds of people just like Corinne, if they all wanted to meet up somewhere, it'll be in there. I'm very, very out of place in a place like that. Some of them probably even thought, how old is that guy? You know, shouldn't be at home with his hot water bottle and a cup of coffee or something. Having seen the full extent of Corinne's beauty regime, Simon wants to find out what drives her to spend £3,000 a month on beauty treatments. If you don't mind me being personal, but uh, where do you come from? Um, my dad is Jamaican and my mum is half Italian. I've got Afro hair from my dad, um, so I just have to have extensions sewn in every month which usually takes about eight hours. Eight hours? Yeah. They have to take it all out and then plait it all, put it back in, wash it all. That's basically my dad's fault because he's Jamaican. Corinne inherited her hair from her father. Simon inherited his condition, Treacher Collins syndrome, from his mother. Don't you feel quite, like, hateful towards... Not hateful towards your mum, but just a bit sort of like, why would you... It's not her fault she was born with Treacher Collins. So it's not her fault she passed it on to me. If I didn't have the Tutor Collins passed on my mum, I wouldn't have done or experienced or even met half of the people that I have done thanks to the Tutor Collins. I think if the tables were turned, I think I'd feel like it was my mum's fault. I'd blame everyone else um, for the way that I look. The feeling I'm getting is she has a little bit of blame for her mum and dad for the way she is. I, 100% don't blame my parents for the way I look or for the way I am. Simon's hoping a visit to Corinne's hometown of Stoke will provide some answers. Corinne hasn't been back to see her family for nine months. What I really, really want to know is where does it all begin? As soon as I get to Stoke and I see the sign, um, I'm that close to having a panic attack. Do you know, like, 
exactly one. I couldn't tell you why. Because I love seeing my mum and nan, but it's just a sort of place that I, I think I just don't like too much. It gives me like emotional stress as well as sort of mental stress and, and everything else. First, Corinne's taking him to meet her mum. Lovely to see you. And you. Yeah. Mum, this is Simon. Hi, you, Simon. Come in. Come in. Pleased to meet you. I'm, I'm Michelle, Corinne's mum. Concerned by Corinne's growing obsession with beauty treatments, Michelle wanted her daughter to take part in the programme. When she comes to visit me, I just get told that um, she's had it done or she's having it done. And I try and persuade her to say, look, you look beautiful as you are, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, regarding her boobs. You don't need them doing, they're absolutely lovely as they are, you should be proud of what you got. She's booked an appointment for a consultation and what she'll do is come back and say, I've had my consultation, I'm booked in to have surgery in two weeks time. You, yeah. probably the closest person she's got in her life. Yeah. And um, you obviously feel strongly against the plastic surgery. I'd like to bring her back into reality, to get her to think differently about herself. I, I, I don't know whether she's unhappy deep inside and she's got put this front on. The more time I spend with her, I can't help getting rid of this voice in my head saying something sparked all this off. Having heard Michelle's point of view, Simon wants mother and daughter to have a full and frank discussion. Yeah, me and Simon are just having a, a little chat um, about how you are as a person. We're here now to get your side of why, why you have to have all these things done to yourself. I just think it's just normal day-to-day -day living, really. What, have a sunbed? You have sunbeds. I used to have sunbeds. Yeah, you used I to have your nails. I used to come and sit with you in the nail shop for hours while you had your nails done in a sunbed and the slimming the, clinic. This is what I'm getting all the time. No matter how much I talk to her about not doing this or not doing that, she just does what she wants anyway. I just see it as, like, it's necessities of life. To me, it's just as important as buying toilet roll and toothpaste. Your mum loves you. And if, if you don't take everything what she says, then who else is there? Who will you listen to? I will listen to people, but my mum's telling me to stop things that she does herself. So I'm not going to sort of stop things that my mum loves to do. Yeah, I did go on the sunbed because, because at the time that, that, was, that was OK to do and I know the risks of sunbeds now. They c yeah. cause your skin cancer. Clearly the one person in the whole world that means the most to her, her mum, and she's telling you she's not happy, she's telling you it's not healthy, and she still ignores it all. Hi! <laughs> Corinne wants Simon to meet the other big influence in her life. Nan, this is Simon. How you doing? Hi, yeah. Are you OK? Well, well thanks. Corinne's mum was only 17 when she was born, and her father left when Corinne was three. For the first 18 years of her life, they lived in Grandma Wanda's house. Originally from Italy, Wanda was like a second mother to her. Growing up, we never thought about finding out more about, um, I guess, the Jamaican side of your life. Not at all. You know what you don't know, you don't miss. That's Corinne's when she was a little baby. All is smiling and posing. And that's oh, when it's... she was at school. Look, like a balloon. <laughs> like a little being blown up. Not real. Yeah, but she was happy there then, Mum. I remember. Oh, she was happy. When yeah. she went on holiday, she was so happy. I know, she's eating curry all the time. I used to tell her to put it on the fridge. And every time she wanted curry or something, to look at herself. Don't just look at her. Meeting Corinne's grandmother has been an eye-opener for Simon. I'm getting the feeling that the gran is partly why she is where she is now. But when you get to, like, teenage years, that's the, that's the most important thing in their lives, to look good. Do yeah. you think that you, you've got... Made you like that? Yes. Yeah. Like obsessed. obsessed. Not, not obsessed. Just to look good, because you... If you, uh, if you look after yourself, you feel good and you're happy. Yeah. Mm. Isn't it? 
It was in her formative teenage years that Corinne's insecurity about her looks began. When I look in the mirror, um, I do sort of see the 15-year-old. I just see, like, fat, ugly, and just sort of a little bit worthless, to be honest. And that's why I think I'm doing all the beauty things to try and better myself so that one day I can look in the mirror and think, yeah, you, you look really nice. I keep opening these doors. Every time I go through the door, there's more doors. I just I keep going, keep going and find out more about her. What's going to be on the other end? I don't know. Simon has Treacher Collins syndrome, a genetic condition that means his facial features didn't form properly before birth. He spent a week with 26 year old hairdresser Corinne, finding out about her addiction to beauty. Simon has discovered that Corinne doesn't like the features she feels she inherited from her Jamaican father. I don't like my afro hair at all. Um, I can't deal with it. I don't like the way it looks. Um, I don't like the texture of it. From what I've learned, it's almost like she is ashamed or maybe embarrassed of the way she is. They're spending two weeks together to challenge each other's perspective on beauty. I don't think Simon really understands. He just thinks that I look OK. Um, so I don't think he's understanding sort of how I feel. To explain to Corinne why he's happy with the way he looks, Simon's taking her to meet his mum in Norwich. <laughs> Simon's mother has a mild form of Treacher Collins syndrome, which affects one in 10,000 of the population. I'm all right, actually, thank you. Yeah, I'll have a coffee. What are you making? Thank you, darling. Simon's younger brother, Luke, lives nearby. Like Simon and his mum, he also has Treacher Collins syndrome. How did you um, feel when Simon was born? We were quite shocked, I suppose, a bit numb at first, because we weren't expecting him to be born like that. So it was like Treacher Collins syndrome. What is it? Um, how do we deal with it? What's going to happen? You know, is he going to have a normal life? Mm. And I think, really, his hearing was the, the main problem. They didn't think he could hear anything. And then we had a consultation with the facial reconstruction people. Yeah. Um, who sort of had produced this list and said, right, well, we can correct his eyes and his nose and his cheeks and his jaw, and we said, whoa, no. And how come you decided sort of completely against it? Our decision was, OK, if there's anything life-threatening or yeah. anything that will affect, seriously affect his health, then fine, we do that. But if it's just cosmetic, then no, because we created Simon and that's how he was and yeah. we love him to bits and we didn't want him any different yeah and you know just because you've got a facial disfigurement it's not necessarily wrong it's just different yeah. so if there aren't a lots of differences no one would ever get used to them would they no I just think she's like an amazing woman and she's she's done so well she's remained positive she's made sure that they sort of have got a lovely life they've had choices in life whether to sort of have the surgery and Corinne's starting to rethink her ideas about the importance of appearances. I feel I've become really close to him. The way he's happy with who he is, it's just great. I'm starting to see that she's getting the message. Yeah, maybe not all of the message, but just a part of the message. But we really just started day one of my world, and we've still got a lot more to go yet. So, fingers crossed, more and more of the message will start sinking in. Simon wants Corinne to meet the other woman in his life. I'm just dying to introduce you to her, but I think more than anything, just dying to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen her for the last week, so... Well, I'm, um, I'm excited to meet her as well. I expect either his girlfriend to have Treacher Collins or a facial disfigurement as well. I just can't imagine someone without a disfigurement getting attached to someone with a disfigurement. This week is the longest Simon and his girlfriend Vicky have ever been apart. Hiya. Just be really in love. We really missed each other, I think, by the looks of it. It's nice to see, like, such a big connection and that someone loves Simon so much. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, obviously. Beautiful love of my life. So how long have you and Simon been together? <coughs> Nearly three years. Nearly yeah. three years, yeah. Simon and Vicky are planning to get married in the summer. What would you like? Um, have you got tea, please? Yeah. Together they're bringing up her children. No, just normal tea. 
and they're thinking of having some more. There's a 50% chance that Simon will pass on his Treacher Collins to any children he and Vicky have. We've both talked about having children, so that shows me that she doesn't mind having children with two. So when the time comes, we ever do have children, I strongly believe that it's not going to be a bad thing, it passing on my two onto uh, our children. Corinne wants to know how Simon's Treacher Collins affects their relationship. I do hear comments. Um, when I first introduced Simon to my life yeah. here, um, we went to pick the girls up for the first time, and people said, what the hell is she doing with a thing like that? <gasps> How Simon deals with things makes you appreciate that you, that you are you. It doesn't matter if you go out with no makeup. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Who really cares? Like, oh, I wonder if she's got makeup yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think exactly. I'm more bothered about what people think of me than I am of, of what I think yeah. of myself. Very self-obsessed, but I'm sure she's a sweet girl. It seems like she's sort of hiding behind um, a mask, basically. Like, you can see that there's something wrong inside. It's 6pm and the children are all home from school. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Do they all have um, new sign language? Or? This one does. The other two are old. <laughs> they're older, so they're sort of not really too that bothered. They know bits and pieces, but this one's... Yeah, she is. She's I don't think the way Simon looks matters to anyone around him at all. It's like they've sort of, they can't even see that really. No matter what he looks like, they just, they just love him to bits. It's Simon's last week with Corinne. He still hasn't persuaded her to love her natural appearance. So he's taking her to London to meet someone who could help. I've been spending a lot of time with Corinne now and I still don't feel that she still gets the message. She's been talking a lot about uh, liposuction. I'm hoping the next message uh, that she'll get from this is something as extreme as liposuction comes with great risks and it's something that she doesn't even need to have in the first place. We have number one. Regan Hendry is casting girls for a national competition. The winner will become the face of a campaign against unnecessary cosmetic surgery. Contestants are judged on their personality and self-confidence, rather than the perfect look. The most important test is the interview. So what would you do for charity? Maybe do like a family fun day. Do a bake sale. Yeah. <laughs> What's your best asset? My freckles. Um, I wouldn't want to get rid of them. Thank you very much. Cool. Regan's keen to get Corinne involved. Corinne, would you like to take part at all? Um, not really, no. No? All right, that's okay. I've never heard of a competition that judges someone's personality before, if that makes sense. Um, and that with someone that's comfortable in their own skin. Things like that I'd need to do in sort of like full makeup and hair done, heels on. So I'm a bit confused, really. Corinne decides she'd like to find out why Regan set up the competition. What made you think, oh, I'm going to do something for real people and natural? Um, my mum is the most real, real person you'd ever meet. And ten years ago, she decided to have liposuction. And it went really wrong. And she died in 2009. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> While having liposuction, Regan's mother, Denise Hendry, suffered a punctured bowel. She had several operations to try to correct the problem, but complications led to her death in 2009. Over 3,000 liposuction operations take place in the UK every year, and none of them are without risk. That's so bad. And it's like things like that that make you think, it's not worth it, is it? No. The truth did get to Corinne a bit. I just hope now that Corinne will start to realise a little bit more about what she's, what she's doing to herself, really. Corinne is starting to realise that liposuction isn't the easy, problem-free procedure she'd previously imagined. I just think it is very dangerous um, and it's not really worth doing just, just when you don't need to change something. When I first started to get to know you, uh, you told me exactly who you are and where you came from, that 
Your mum's uh, half Italian and your other half is Jamaican and yeah. all that. But I don't get the feeling that you're happy with who you are. So I have, uh, in fact, arranged to uh, take you on a trip to find out more about your background, and that okay. means a trip to Jamaica. <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> right, OK. So, uh, oh, my God. How do you feel about that? <gasps> I'm actually shocked. I am hoping that, uh, that on this trip to uh, Jamaica, you will find out more about your Jamaican oh, heritage. Oh, thank you, Simon. Sorry. Thank you. This Joe is going to pry into who she is you know, and how she should go out in the world, you know, which is someone who's comfortable with the way they look. Simon wants me to learn to um, love who I am, but I don't actually know who I am because I don't, I don't know that half of my family and I'm not sure who yet. I'm, I'm like sort of half a person at the moment. Simon and Corinne are travelling 5,000 miles to Kingston, Jamaica. Corinne has always been uninterested in her Jamaican heritage and has no memory of her Jamaican father. Simon wants Corinne to embrace her Afro-Caribbean features and stop trying to change herself. Hi! The first thing Corinne wants to do is go shopping. Have you got a cap, Simon? I've got a collection of caps, yeah. Have you? Why don't you buy another one? Hello, sir. Hi. What up, baby? Pardon? What's up? What's up? We're just looking around the shops. You are from England? Yeah. yeah. And we've come over here to see what it's like. It, it, it looks like a Jamaican. Do I? Yeah. OK. Well, my dad is Jamaican um, and my mum's half Italian. I hope you have a good day. Thank yeah, you. Buddy. See you later. Corinne disguises her natural afro hair by getting it chemically straightened and then has extra hair extensions plaited in. Today, it's bothering her. Because of the heat, all my natural bits are starting to like fizzle out and make, it, make an appearance. And I don't want them to make an appearance. Simon takes Corinne to meet a hairdresser who specialises in natural afro hairstyles. Career. This is Melissa. Hello, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, so how often do you, do you get your hair done? Um, I usually get my extensions out and in every six weeks. Every six weeks? Yeah. Okay. But um, so how long has you have in this one now? This has been in about three weeks. And Corinne has noticed some damage. Every time she takes it out, it's like here, but it just snaps off. Right, because of the, the over processing roots. So it keeps tearing it off. Melissa takes Corinne into the back salon to meet another client who suffered damage. She's been over-processing her hair for 40 years. Hi. Hi. This is Rose. Rose, this is Corinne. Hello, nice Hi, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, I want European hair. <laughs> you know where it's like really straight and just, it's easy. Having European hair would be nice, but you don't, right? Yeah. You have natural, um, kinky, black half, black hair, right? So you just have to work with what you have, you know? Rose has a surprise for Corinne. This is my... This is what? This is the remains here. No, oh I, I mean, gosh. this is just... See here? Look at this. This is due to the whole over-processing, right? And the tightening. It pulls the hair out and it pulls it from the root. So the continuation of the weaves result in the hair falling out. I don't want him um, to end up with no hair. I, I have got it. like a, a few ball patches, but mm -hmm. I just like ignore them. I'm just no, like, oh, so but that's, that's, please don't. You can't, don't because that's, that's, the that's, the that's, the that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning. Don't ignore it. That's the beginning of it. Don't. Corinne's been hiding her bald patches for four years. It's the first time she's admitted there's a problem with her beauty regime. I'm glad you took me there, really, because it sort of opened my eyes up to what could be. So I think I'll definitely start giving my hair a bit of a rest. I don't want to be like Rose and end up bald like that. To him, it's just from having your hair weaved. It's not good. So the message can't cross? Yeah. yeah that's what I want. <laughs> When I become Rose's age, or maybe even a bit sooner, I might want my natural hair out. And then what am I going to do when I've got big bald patches and, and I'm going to have to have laser on my head and all that lot? I don't want it to come to that. I want to... The day that I get rid of my extensions is the day that I've got still beautiful hair underneath and I can rock that look. 
the trip to Jamaica is starting to have an unexpected impact on Simon. This is the first time I've been so far away from home, uh, first time I've travelled on my own. So it's another thing I have to get used to, the fact that I'm so, so far away from my comfort zone. To put up with the stares from people and not actually have anyone to sort of turn to you and say, just ignore it, just ignore it. I haven't to tell myself to do that. But it is a whole new experience and I'm hoping to learn more from it. Jamaica is also rubbing off on Corinne. Welcome to Jamaica. She's beginning to feel differently about her Jamaican origins. A man actually came up to me and said, that I look Jamaican. And um, yeah, that made me feel quite proud, especially because I'm here as well. And it feels nice to be part of the uh, country. And you no, know, I'd be a, definitely a regular visitor to Jamaica if I knew where my family were. Simon and beauty addict Corinne have come to Jamaica on a mission to put Corinne back in touch with her Jamaican origins. Today, they're going to meet Miss Jamaica 2007, Zara Redwood. Hello! <laughs> nice to meet you. It's Corinne. Right? Yeah. Zara. Nice to meet you, Zara. Someone told me a bit about you, so... Zara was the first dreadlocked Rastafarian Miss Jamaica, who also competed in the Miss Universe competition. I've been told that the parts of you that you think are Jamaican are the parts that you try to... Cover up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any yeah. reason? Um, just because, so I don't really like Afro hair. I think my nose is, is quite Jamaican. Are you saying you're dissatisfied with your nose? <laughs> I'm teasing. I don't really like I it just, that much, but yeah. I've walked around with this nose without a problem since birth. Do your friends think the same? We all just like, sort of like, see like a Barbie image and think that we should sort of look like that. So like perfect boobs, perfect nose, perfect lips, perfect hair. That's your concept of beauty? Yeah. Uh, so anything not that is not beautiful? I'm not saying um, Jamaican features are not beautiful. I just don't enjoy my features. You just don't? No. The key to success, I think, in the world of beauty is loving who is authentically you. Because that is what I've realized that model scouts look for, not a half a dozen females who all look the same. I say when you embrace what it is that you've been given, that's when things start to flourish. In the words of Lady Gaga, say, you know, I was born this way. Yeah. Then you kind of get so much further. Sara, being uh, Miss um, Jamaica, did help Corinne respect her Jamaican features. You can go so far with just loving the way you look, basically. And um, I, I get the impression that Corinne is starting to feel like that. Yeah, I thought she was gorgeous. She's really friendly and she's just so natural. And I think what's stopping me from being happy is sort of just being myself, really. And think that that's something that I need to say to people, this is who I am, so ex exactly what Zara said, deal with it, and that's it. I really need a drink, do you? Yeah, cold drink would be Yeah. Good. Can we have a drink? Please. Simon, do you want me to pay for this? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And another one, please. It's the end of Corinne and Simon's time in Jamaica and the end of their two weeks together. I've had the best sort of two weeks ever, really. I've learned about just being sort of comfortable from within and being happy from within instead of sort of like putting it all on the outside. You don't need to go through so much what I call extremes yeah. just to look good. Also about surgery, I really, really don't want surgery ever again. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. <laughs> the way he's happy with who he is and with things that you can you can never ever change, it's just great. So being with him's made me think a lot different about life now. Since I met Corinne, I've done things I've never done before. Probably the biggest thing is being here in Jamaica. I guess it's brought me to realise how independent I can be, and that it's not such a traumatic thing to be independent. And I'm glad I have done it.
After a 10 hour flight, Simon and Corinne are back in the UK. Oh, I'm excited to see her. She doesn't know I'm here. I'm hoping that she's changed. Hi! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've come to see you. Well, so what I tell you, man, what you told me yesterday on the beach. It's just been a, a great experience, um, and I don't think I'll be doing what I was doing before I sort of went. Having yeah. some beds and, and surgery and bothered about makeup and stuff. So it's been successful. Get in there! <laughs> well done. Oh, I love you. And Corinne has made a big decision about the heritage she'd always shunned. Um, I'd like to find my Jamaican family. Yeah, let's do it. If I can, somewhere. <laughs> Well, you'll know that you get 100% my support anyway there, yeah. don't you? OK. But if this is what you want, then this is, this is what we'll try and go out and achieve, yeah? OK. OK, because you deserve it. I love you. Oh, Simon's a star. He really is a star. Um, he's a superstar in my eyes. I'm quite sad to see um, Simon go. He's like changed my life really. I just think he's lovely. He's just sort of, um, he's always strong and um, he's positive and he lives really how you should, how you should be living. I accomplished what I wanted to do and that is to change career. She's a different person than she was when I first met her. I just hope she does keep in touch and uh, keep me uh, updated on how she's getting on.